guys, so as you know, I have been testing several family members and comparing our DNA samples using various testing sites. The way I've been able to do this is I've been downloading their raw data and then uploading all of our raw data into the same testing site so that I can do a comparison. I have received some requests regarding how to download the raw data and upload it to other testing sites, which is what I will do now. I'm going to show you how to do that from Ancestry DNA and 23andMe, and then I will upload into MyHeritage as well as the Marley DNA for the paternal haplogroup. So let's get started. I'm logged into Ancestry DNA. And the first thing I want to do here is click on DNA, go to your DNA results summary. I'm going to click on settings and under test management and then actions, there's an option there that says download DNA data. I'm going to click on download. I'll need to confirm my password. I'm clicking on the box here. I understand that after my DNA data is downloaded, the downloaded copy will not be protected by Ancestry DNA. That's just a disclaimer Ancestry does to make sure you know that you're responsible for keeping your own data secure once you download it. So I'm going to click on confirm. All right, so now it tells me to check my email and Ancestry is going to send me a link and in my email account, which I will need to click on to continue the process. All right, guys, so I am in my email account and there is no email yet because it takes a few minutes. So while we wait for that email, let's take a look at what Vlad is over here doing. I work all week long. Yeah, he does work all week long. And by the way, he's a Florida State fan, y'all. Yeah. Absolutely. Excuse the man cave. I come down here and I junk it up sometimes. He hates all the time. I do that. <laughs> so the reason why I come down here though is because he plays video games and I can work and hide from the kids. So well, they come find her. Uh, they always come find me. Regularly. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm still waiting for the um, DNA download link. Like I said, it takes a few minutes. And yeah, so we'll continue on just a minute. All right, so you'll see here the email has arrived from Ancestry. It says your DNA data is ready. If I click on that, it then has a download DNA data link here. I will go ahead and click on that. It takes me back to Ancestry and this is where I'll need to finish the download process. I'll click here, download DNA data. It starts the download process here. You can then open the file and save it wherever you'd like. I save mine on my personal password protected laptop, which I'm the only one who has access to. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to download from 23andMe. All right, from I'm, I clicked on her name here, and I'm going to go to Browse Raw Data. And under Browse Raw Data, it says your raw data, and then it says you can view or download your data at any time in its raw, uninterpreted format. So I'm going to click on download here. All right, it then takes me to a screen that says your raw data download is ready. So I'll click on the link here, download raw data. And you'll see, unlike Ancestry, it just goes ahead and starts downloading the file. So I don't have to go to my email and download it. I think that was just an extra security feature that Ancestry has. So just like with the Ancestry file, I'll just go ahead and open it and you can save it wherever you'd like. I save it to my personal password protected laptop. All right, so now I have the Ancestry DNA raw data and I have the 23andMe raw data. All right guys, so I'm in my heritage now where I've uploaded a lot of my family's 
raw data. One of the reasons why I uploaded my family's raw data into my heritage is because our youngest daughter, Karis, took the MyHeritage test because they offer swab tests instead of spit tests and she didn't want to spit into the tube so we went with MyHeritage and in order to do a family comparison I used raw data for the rest of us and uploaded it into MyHeritage. Alright so from MyHeritage I click on here DNA and I want to go to upload DNA data. Click here for start and you will want to choose whether or not it's your data you're uploading or someone else's. It doesn't matter here because I've already uploaded all of our data, so I'm not actually going to officially upload anything today, but I will take you through the steps. So I'm going to choose, just for the sake of example, someone else's data. Then they have you clicking on all of these disclaimers, pretty much. I have read and accept the MyHeritage terms. You can read that on your own. I consent to the processing. I confirm that the DNA data I'm, uh, I'm uploading is not related to any law enforcement or forensic investigation. I have obtained permission from the person and I have read and accept the DNA informed consent. Okay. Then I'm going to click on upload. It's asking me, is this person a male or female? Then you can put in the person's first and last name, their year, the relationship to you, and you choose upload. Click on one of the files wherever you saved it. It tells you the DNA file is being uploaded. All right, so then it says DNA uploaded successfully. It provides me with a kit number and it was assigned to the person's first and last name. I just chose for the sake of this example, sample test. And it says that they will begin processing in two to three days. So you can click on done and you just wait. And once you get notified, what you can do is when you log back into MyHeritage, you can go to DNA and go to manage DNA kits. And from there, you'll be able to see all of the kits you uploaded, the ones you're managing, and then you can do whatever comparisons or anything that you'd like. Now, keep in mind, though, MyHeritage is only going to allow you a, a limited amount of free services, meaning it will show you some free DNA matches. Um, it won't show you your ethnicity estimates when you upload your raw data unless you pay $29 to see that or you will have to do an annual subscription to their site. All right, so let me take a look at this though. Just want to show you as an example. Our daughter cares here has a MyHeritage DNA kit. I have an uploaded DNA kit. I want to do some comparisons between the two of us. So I'm going to choose the view DNA matches. And when I click on view DNA matches, this is something I wanted to show you guys anyway. So let's talk about this, right? It shows here, obviously my husband is her father. Yay. <laughs> now, it does have the estimated relationship here as father for my husband. What I find interesting, though, is with other testing sites, like when we tested our other children on um, Ancestry DNA, it shows the shared DNA as 50%. But with Karis, interesting enough, it shows that her father has 46.4% shared DNA with her and I have 46% shared DNA with her which may simply be because Karis took the MyHeritage test and we uploaded our raw data from another testing site so perhaps that's why it's showing the percentages are lower than a typical 50% from each parent. 
but you'll see here that I am listed as her mother and my heritage shows that I share less DNA with my daughter than her dad does but again it's just all a matter of how the testing company is analyzing the DNA now what I do find interesting though is like I mentioned before Karis and Peyton are full siblings they have the same mom and dad and I'll show you I'll click on Peyton in just a minute so you'll see when I click on her that it'll show my husband and I are her parents but anyway even though they are full sisters my heritage is showing they only share 31.5 percent DNA which is why my heritage is estimating their relationship as sister half sister aunt or niece now obviously we know that they don't have an aunt or niece relationship but it's interesting to see that they're saying she could either be a sister, which meaning full sister, or a half sister. And they're basing that solely upon their shared DNA, right? All right, so real quick, I want to switch over to Peyton's profile. And it says here, results are ready. I want to click on view DNA matches. And under Peyton, you will see that again, my husband is listed as her father. Now, keep in mind that Peyton took the Ancestry DNA test just like uh, Devin and I did. This is why I think when my heritage did the analysis of Devin, my DNA, and Peyton's DNA, our shared DNA is higher than when compared to Karis's because we all took the test from the same testing site and she's the only one who didn't. So our raw data came from Ancestry DNA. All right, so it shows that Peyton matches her dad at 49.8% father. I'm her mother, even though it says parent or child here, obviously Peyton is not my parent. <laughs> so I'm her parent, she's my child. And it shows that I share 49.5% DNA with her. But let's go back to that relationship between Peyton and Karis. You see here that, again, we're now looking at Peyton's profile. It's showing here that she matches Karis with 31.5% DNA, which my heritage is saying could, could be a sister, half-sister, etc. All right, I already showed you that they have both my husband and I listed as their mother and father for both kids. So we know, well, we know anyway because they're our kids, but now you know they are indeed full siblings and not half siblings. So the question becomes, why then are they only showing shared DNA of 31.5%? Again, it may simply be because Karis took the MyHeritage DNA test and Peyton and the, the rest of us took the Ancestry DNA test. To put this into perspective even more, my older daughter, Ye, is Karis's half-sister as well as Peyton's half-sister. Now it's showing, MyHeritage is showing Peyton and Ye share 27.5 percent DNA they are indeed half sisters right keep in mind that Peyton and Ye both took the ancestry DNA test which is probably why the shared DNA is higher and it's it's showing as it should be right however I think this shared DNA between Peyton and Karis that my heritage analyzed is simply too low. I've already shared my concerns about the MyHeritage DNA test, which you can check out in the video I will link on the screen. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is how to upload raw DNA data into the MarleyDNA.com project in order to analyze your Y DNA haplogroup. 
Okay, do keep this in mind though that you can only do this if you are a male or you will need to analyze one of your male relatives. So for instance, if you're a woman and you're wanting to know where your paternal line descended from, you will either need your dad's DNA profile, your dad's DNA raw data, or your brother who shares the same father with you, or you can get the information from your uncle who comes from the same paternal line. In this situation, I am going to use Vlad, my husband, aka Devin's DNA raw data to show you as an example. So I'm here at MarleyDNA.com. I will include the link in the video. I've already read through all of this so you can read through on your own and here it tells you that you can upload Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, MyHeritage, etc. So I click here, I consent to the processing and collection of my data and now I'm going to choose file. All right, I'm just going to wherever I have saved my data. So wherever you decided to save it, you go there. I have my husband's DNA raw data file and I'm just going to hit submit. And once it's there, I want to click on this link that says feed this data into the MarleyDNA.com YSNP subclade predictor. I'm going to click on here. I'm not a robot. Again, I'm going to consent to the processing and then click on predict. And you'll see here that it will show up as most likely R1A1, A1, B1, A2B. And here are the other names for that same haplogroup. I've already done a video on this, so if you haven't seen it, I'll go ahead and link it on the screen here and you can check out more information about that haplogroup. But anyway, we discovered that my husband's haplogroup is most likely from Poland. So I heard that this tool works really well. It actually matches up to what 23andMe also says concerning the Y-DNA haplogroups. So let me know if you've used it and what you thought about it. I hope this information helped you with understanding how to download raw data and uploading it to other sites so that you can do further comparisons between your family DNA. I have some exciting videos coming out. I have some great ideas about new content. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell if you would like to see future videos. I'm wishing you all the very best along your journey and with your discoveries. I will see you soon.